let's take a look at some uh, submentover text positions. Uh, for the SMV views, we want to look at the positioning criteria. Uh, first off, we have the IOML parallel to the image receptor and, the, and perpendicular to the central ray, or you could say the central ray perpendicular to the IOML. Uh, the mid-sagittal plane should be perpendicular to the image receptor as well. Uh, we want a vertical or a lengthwise cassette placement. Um, remember that you can you can uh, typically do this on a 10 by 12 for, for skull. Um, if you're doing it as a sinus series, you probably want an 8 by 10. We want a 40 inch SID. And the central ray also enters one half inch inferior to the mandibular symphysis or midway between the gonions. Let's take a look at some uh, critique. Uh, the frontal bone and mandibular symphysis uh, should be superimposed. Um, and I don't have an image for this, but when you uh, line up your patient for this view, you should really see uh, the shadow, a round set, uh, shadow of the frontal bone with the nose projecting anteriorly to that frontal bone as much as possible. That's kind of a good indi indication that you're in a good position. Mandibular condyles right here should be anterior to the petrous pyramids. And the distance between the mandibular condyles and the lateral margins of the skull should be symmetrical. All right, let's take a look at this one. What do you think? Uh, we have the condyles anterior to the petrous ridges. It's hard to see the frontal bone on this, but I would imagine it looks pretty good uh, superimposed with the um, symphysis here. And then we also have the distances between the condyles and the outer margins of the skull, which don't look uh, very symmetrical to me. Uh, there's a little more distance on the patient's right side. And that's just going indi to indicate some uh, tilt. Now remember, tilt versus rotation. Uh, if you're tilting the skull, uh, that means the vertex is to the right or left. Rotation means the chin is turned uh, to the left or right. So rotation would bring, uh, to, to the patient's right, would bring uh, this section here kind of over this way. Tilt is going to bring the top of the head to the right uh, or to the left. And I can tell uh, there's a, a midline structure here. A uh, perpendicular plate looks to the right of the dens here just a little bit. And then that extra added distance uh, is going to indicate tilt to the patient's right. Kind of tricky in the SMB view. All right, here's one done for sinuses. I think. Uh, and everything else looks good. We're looking at the angles or uh, the mandibular rami. They're still anterior to the petrous pyramids. Uh, looks like a pretty good symmetrical distance between uh, the condyles and the lateral margin of the skull. However, this line looks here to be a little bit rotated. Take a look. It's not, uh, the mid sagittal plane is not. Uh, at a 90 degree angle there. So we've got a little bit of rotation to the right on this one. All right, what do you think about this one? Uh, tilt again, you've got a little bit of a distance between the condyles and the lateral margin of the skull. Uh, no distance here, so this would probably be tilt to the left. And you can tell because there's some midline structures here that aren't exactly lining up as well. Let's look at one more. Now, we don't have the uh, teeth projecting uh, anterior to the frontal bone, and the symphysis is definitely not superimposed with the frontal bone here. So that's an indication that your, uh, your chin or your, your head is not extended. Uh, I'm sorry, your neck is not extended enough. Uh, the chin needs to come up, or you can throw a cephalic angle onto this. Uh, a couple other things here. Your uh, distance between the condyles and the lateral margin of the skull is less on the left uh, than the right, which would also indicate a little bit of tilt towards the right. And that's shown with the green lines here. SMVs are tricky. Uh, there, there are ways to do them upright. Uh, typically, I like to put a, a wedge or decube sponge or a couple decube sponges behind the shoulders uh, a little bit low and lean the patient back. It's easier for them to extend the neck that way. 
or you can do it supine to cube sponges underneath the shoulders and just kind of hang the head. Some people like to hang the head off the edge of the table um, and then use a wedge sponge to prop a cassette up underneath. Uh, obviously with a grid, but uh, whatever way you can do it, uh, upright is the, the best way for sinuses to visualize air fluid level. And uh, supine, if it's just for skull to rule out fracture, um, again, it's going to be it's going to be a little tougher to do, but but it is possible. I'll see if I can get some videos up to show the positioning uh, at a later time. Thanks for watching.